Okay, this sermon is entitled, Why I Don't Believe Matthias is Saved. I'd like to open up with prayer, and then with a few verses, all right, Dear God, thank you for giving us your clear word. Thank you for allowing us to see what it says. Bless the listeners, I ask all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Psalm 87 reads, His foundation is in the holy mountains. The Lord loveth the gates of Zion more than all the dwellings of Jacob. Glorious things are spoken of thee, O city of God, Selah. Now, I hope I'm wrong about this. I hope Matthias is saved. And the reason why I'm preaching this is because I'm basing this on the Bible. I'm not basing this on some stupid meter or some stupid man-made philosophy for why people are not saved like he does. The first reason I believe he's not saved is because he does not believe that anyone who simply believes on Jesus Christ has eternal life. John 6.47 is clear. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that believeth on me hath everlasting life. Matthias believes that children either can't believe, or if they do believe, they don't have everlasting life. So he doesn't believe the gospel. He doesn't believe Romans 1.16, where Paul makes it clear that anyone who believes on Christ is saved by the power of God, which is the gospel. Okay, number two, he calls believers unsaved because they made a quote-unquote decision. Now, I don't believe that you make a decision to believe. One either believes or they don't. Once you're convinced that something is true, you can either believe it or not believe it. And this concept of decisionism is not even biblical. It's not even theological. The term decisionism is a political term. It means, you know, basically, according to the dictionary, it's doctrine which states that moral or legal precepts are products of decisions made by political or legal bodies. It has nothing to do with theology. Okay, so he basically declares people unsaved because he thinks they're decisionists. When in fact, they're believers on Christ, so they're saved. So he doesn't believe the gospel in my second point either. Number three, he's trusting in himself not to doubt. He says if you doubt, you're not saved. So according to him, according to Matthias, you lose your salvation if you doubt, or you prove you never had it. Calvinism, Arminianism, that's what he believes. Number four, he's full of confusion. Turn over to 1 Corinthians chapter number 14. Now, I listened to Matthias the other night for like three hours. Nothing but confusion. That's all it is. No clarity, no lucidity, nothing. Confusion out to wazoo. 1 Corinthians chapter number 14. Let's take a look at verse 33, and it reads, For God is not the author of confusion, but of peace, as in all churches of the saints. So Matthias is not of God, period. Okay, the next point is that he's trusting in his works. Now, he doesn't make it very clear that he's trusting in his works all the time or very obvious, but if you listen to him long enough, he makes statements that, that proves he's trusting in works. He said one time, and he said it more than once, that if you think you can just go out and abuse grace and just sin all you want, just live it up, live a total pell-mell, just carte blanche, do whatever you want, sinful life, then you are never saved. Now, I don't see what that has to do with believing on Christ. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. Where does it say if you, if you live a totally sinful life and you want to abuse grace and use grace as a license to sin, where does it say you're not saved? All I get from the Bible in Romans chapter 5 is that where sin abounds, grace does much more abound. If a person wants to live like the devil and go out and sin all they want and abuse grace, that just proves they're carnal. Okay, that's just all that. That's all it proves. It's ridiculous. Okay, the next point is that he goes by a, a salvation meter to determine if people are saved or not. What you go by in all verity is the word of God and nothing else. Turn over to First John chapter five. I'm sick of this garbage. I don't see why anyone believes he's saved. That who has the Holy Spirit, who's actually born again. First John chapter five and verse thirteen makes it clear on who's saved. These things have I written unto you that believe on the name of the Son of God, that ye may know that you have eternal life, and that you may believe on the name of the Son of God. It's based on what whether you believe on the name of the Son of God or not. It's not based on some stupid man made meter. It's not based on any stupid meter. It's based on what the Bible says. Okay, my next point is that he believes in special faith. Faith in Christ is not good enough for him. I've heard him say multiple times there were believers that weren't saved. I mean, that's what an unsaved Calvinist teaches. Okay? He believes in some kind of special faith where you seek God out, and then if you seek him out long enough, God will give you the gift of faith, more Calvinism, 
and then I, I guess you I guess you're saved according to that. No such thing as special faith. You either believe on Christ or you don't. Now my seventh point is what really makes me believe he's not saved at all. Now I'm going to play a clip here. He does not believe that one is saved at the very moment or the very nanosecond that they believe on Christ. I'm going to play this clip and then I'm going to close you know, with a couple verses. To me, if somebody's not a believer, they're, they're just not saved. What must I do to be saved? Believe. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. Um, it, it doesn't say believe for a nanosecond. It doesn't say believe for a week. It doesn't say believe for as long as it takes for somebody else to trick you into something else. So according to that clip, Matthias does not believe that a person is saved at the moment they believe on Jesus Christ. He thinks you have to keep believing. But the Bible makes it very clear that it's the moment you believe, the very nanosecond, as he denies, John 5.24 reads, Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that heareth my word and believeth on him that sent me hath everlasting life and shall not come into condemnation but is passed from death unto life. At the moment you trust Christ alone you have the gift of everlasting life, the promise of never being condemned and you've passed from death unto life. It's instantaneous. So I don't believe Matthias is saved based on these seven points. Number one, I'll recapitulate. He doesn't believe that anyone who believes on Jesus Christ, namely children, have everlasting life. Number two, he calls true born-again believers unsaved, okay, because he says they made a decision. Stupid. Number three, he's trusting in himself not to doubt, okay. Number four, he's full of confusion. He's not full of peace and full of clarity, but confusion. Number five, he's deep down trusting in his works. Number six, he goes by meters instead of God's word. Number seven, okay, well, he has special faith and he doesn't believe that salvation is instantaneous. So based on God's word, I don't believe Matthias is saved. But I do want him to be saved, and I could be wrong, he could be saved. But based on the scripture and all these points, I don't think he is. So that's all I have. Let me go ahead and close in prayer. Dear God, thank you for giving us your clear word. Thank you for allowing us to see what it says. Bless the listeners. I ask all this in Jesus' name. Amen.